Okay, well, I call this meeting to order then. Um, first item on the agenda is to review the vote on the meeting minutes of September 25th, 2019. Um, does anyone have any uh, comments or uh, recommended amendments to the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, the past vendor and payroll warrants. I signed those earlier last week. And you have those in front of you. I don't know if there are any comments you have on those. No. Okay, great. Um, third, third item on the agenda are comments from the public on items not listed on the agenda. Are there any? Nothing for you, Ruth? Brandon? Dan's mom? <laughs> uh, Dan? Uh, the only thing of interest, and in the Energy Committee may be well aware of it, uh, Deerfield Energy Committee's got a couple of consultants going to put <coughs> uh, solar roofing over the Frontier parking lot. Uh, oh, good, good. They're going for a matching grant. I'm sure they'll have to go to the four towns to get the money, but this matter of interest. Okay. And, and Frontier would, would control that electricity, right? It would be yep. Frontier is essentially the leasing agent. Right, right. But the four towns would have to yeah, do yeah. it. Yeah. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. So can our school use that electricity being part of the district? However they set it up. I don't, I don't that depends. Whoever's gonna buy the electricity. Oh, okay. <coughs> okay. Great. Well, all right, we're cruising through the agenda. Uh, so 605, right on time, we have a public hearing to consider a petition submitted by Verizon for the placement of a utility pole metal platform, regulators and wires on Long Plain Road. So who's here from Eversource and or? Thank I'm here you. from Eversource. Great. I'm going to I'm going to pull the uh, two things I sent in advance up on the <coughs> screen here. So I'd send you guys two. Yeah. So you want to pull the most recent one. Okay. The one. Um, well, unfortunately, yeah. they're both dated March 14th <laughs> and 13th, but the one okay. that shows the diff distance between poles 18 feet apart. Okay. Yeah. Is, is this a is it. this a parcel that we visited as a group once or no? Yes. Twice. Twice, I twice. Twice, right. We did, I'm just making sure yeah. we're talking about the same one. We, we did twice, although the uh, the map doesn't do it justice to the location. And the distances are way off. I mean, 100 feet, you got to show me two, two property lines. Our assessor's map shows you 300 feet. You put distances on a map that don't relate to, to property boundaries. So it's it's really exaggerating where you where you're putting your poles. So the the difference <clears throat> that must be a typo within the 100 feet there. Um, those two poles on either side of that 100 feet, those are staying where they are. Right. Um, poles, but they're still labeled in the wrong place. Does not give us that and even the, the 18 foot one that you're proposing, 18 feet away. You show another sliver of for an access for property back here on parcel 06042. Uh, 18 feet lands in the middle of that parcel. You're you're way off in the dimensions here. I, I don't know what you. I guess you you don't look at parcels. You just put numbers on a map the way I could see it. So it's it's very deceiving. The petition was put forward by Verizon, not ever source. So we didn't come up with this. Um, no. <clears throat> I know from, a, and I, I'll speak for, I guess, Verizon a little bit here in Eversource, we do our best to scale these to what we can and provide the dimensions. Um, it's not always perfect, because you know we don't always have the best maps to deal with. Um, right. well, you know. it, no, I mean, look at the assessor's <coughs> maps. The assessor's maps are public data. Well, look at that, well, that 18 feet is in the middle of that access to that parcel behind this other one and so you're asking so you're proposing to put a pole in the middle of that <coughs> access point 
to their property owner, a pole plus, uh, I guess, the uh, what regulators and whatever else there in the middle of the pro that property owner's access. That's what you're doing. So when we had reviewed it in the field, I didn't have the property owner's maps in front of us, right? So we had right. reviewed the location. We, we sort of came to a, an agreement that was a, you know, an acceptable location to move forward with the petition, right? right? Um, yeah, we did. And I, I, I'll admit, I, I was there with you and, and, uh, mm -hmm. and others uh, both times. And yeah, we, we, we agreed that was a better, uh, better location than what you originally proposed, but I guess we, we didn't look at the property on you know, the property boundaries at that time either. Uh, there's also an option to move that closer to the next pole, I think. It wouldn't be in this in this uh, right away so access. The further north we go, the closer we get to a body of water. So we prefer not to go any closer. Well, there's a stream or brook or, or whatever, but <clears throat> can I can I ask a clarification question? Sure. Is it possible that what this map indicates is not what we thought would be the best locations? I mean, I, I'm hard pressed to believe that, and I don't remember visiting this, maybe I did it, but I'm, I'm hard pressed to believe that we would encourage a pole exactly in the middle of someone's access, because we're standing right there. So I'm, I guess my question is, is where we suggested the pole go is not adequately reflected on this map, rather than we didn't take a look at everything there. Well, both of what you're saying is true. We didn't look because we didn't know where the property boundaries were at the time. They kill us. Uh, it's, all just, it's all just woods. It's, yeah, all, it's, it's, all, it's all just forested It's all forested, it's all forested so, and we didn't look for property boundaries, I, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, and yeah, we, we did agree that that would be the best location. And we did look at it. And that impacts the access road? Yeah, it appears in the oh. middle. Where's the access road? Well, look at this part, look at these parcels up there. Right, That's uh, this That's is like a little... Right there, yeah. They, so access to lot 42. Right. I don't see it impacting that access. I think I see it to the south of that access. Well, I think there's an existing no, one here. No, it's really to the north. It's and the then case. there's... This it's, one, you're saying that that one actually would block the access. Well, the, that's existing though, so that so that already does block the access. Well, so that's I, not, I don't, I don't know no because my guess is that that access is more north, and then this is there. But there's no way there's a pole right in front of access already. No, but I, I guess we don't know that because uh, well, of course we do. <laughs> right? Well, mm -hmm. there's you no know where the pole is, but you don't know where the property boundaries are. No, but you know where the access road currently is. No, because there, there, there is no there is no access. There is no access, oh, there's no access road. It's a wooded. So it's when you stand area. and look between those yeah. poles, yeah. right, the hundred foot yeah. reference point, it's just a wooded lot. So there's no, no access. Lot. So how does the access road? No, but that is that access to that property is the there. Back. Yes, that's how that person here has access to his property, even though it's not being used right now. Right. <laughs> and if you yep. if you look at the yeah, it's yeah, a little bigger. <clears throat> Even bigger. Okay. okay you can, you can, it, that's the uh, where the proposal on pole. And if you if you use the measurement, the distance from that one edge to the other, it's only like 28 feet or something. Yeah, Is it that, looks like uh, 50 feet or less. It's hard to. Yeah. So uh, of the 28 28 feet, you're putting at 18 feet into that into that area. I, I think. Somebody needs to, I, I say somebody, it's either them or, or I guess we can ask Keith I, I, to locate the property boundaries to see where that's going. I don't think you'd be able to locate the property boundaries. Okay, also. well. Unless there's existing pins. Yeah. You know, I, I think we, we had the same the same uh, concern after we looked at it on Haydenville Road where the one was going there. Even though mm -hmm. it's on ledge and, and up a, a steep right. uh, terrain, it is the only access to property behind there, and of course we didn't know that. Looking to no, yeah. Um, yeah, we didn't know was, that. yeah, 
Inville was the same way. We didn't know that until we Inville came back. Had, and but that property had its own driveway access. No. Yeah, it did because it was. So we we may not have been on the corner of that lot, but it. So it was a steep incline to get yeah. up. But there was no that that property behind there. I thought had access from the the house on the corner, right? I thought that was all one. No, it isn't. It's it's two separate parcels. But anyway, that's that's a different, different issue. It's but, a different day, but, but I, I'm I guess, remembering the steep ledge. Yeah. I thought we had settled something about the access at the time, and I don't, uh, I can't say that I know exactly. So what's what the solution? Was. I, well, there's there is one other thing, of course, on this one, and that is that um, we did hear from uh, one of the abutters, and they had some concerns and some questions. So. Um, I'm wondering if maybe in the end we continue this to our next meeting, but uh, maybe let folks know what kind of information the abutters are looking for. So Does just, that seem like a reasonable thing to do? So just to follow up, I just pulled up your the town parcel map. Um, and I have the the Esri layer on, so the, the Google View layer. Um, the pole that we are looking to go 18 feet from north, that pole is north of the access for that flag lot. So you're saying that this Petition. lovely map that we supplied is that has the poles marked inaccurately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you're showing that to butters, they're going to say, "Hey, it's not in my front yard, so I have no problem." But actually, if you move it north, it's going to be more in there. So which layer you said you had the GIS data layer? Did yeah, I think it was Esri. Esri, I don't get that doesn't come up on this. One. Those or Esri imagery. I get contour map, DEP wetlands, mass GIS data. If you go to the layers. right. There's a um, over here. There's like a four square box. Uh -huh. You can click on that. <coughs> Set of four square ones. <coughs> it's like a large square with four small squares. Making it up. It's next to the ruler. Oh, there's the star. So you click on that. Oh, okay. The Esri imagery tab. tab. Thank you. Imagery tab. Yeah, I was looking under the uh, the things on the left hand side. <coughs> um, and so, how can you tell from there where the pole is? Because you can see the pole. <coughs> Let's say halfway through the town of Whateley, former landfill site, right? So right around the 306 foot mark. Uh -huh. So if you look ahead of that, and I just know this from looking at this, you can see the top of the cross arm in the shadow mm -hmm. in the tree. Yeah. There. And then there's. Um... So then we're go. We would propose to replace that pole and then put a new pole, 18, 18 feet north feet of north that. Of that. 18 feet being about you know, that big so something like that so he's saying this is where the pole is right there but it's been moved to the north he's saying that goes no there well that no, the he said there. the existing pole would stay be replaced or be replaced so in approximately the same location and then the new pole would go 18 feet north which should look like something like that if that's <clears throat> is that accurate that the pole would be replaced in the exact same location that it currently exists? I think approximately. It's, I mean, yeah, it's like a two foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because of auger width. Yeah. Um, so it's actually okay, on the corner of this uh, this lot, and I assume this is the lot of the abutter who had some concerns. Fourteen dash zero dash one. That one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that. So the 100 foot is what is, right, that's where it was scaled and it puts it in that area. It's further north of that. Um, okay, well, it, that's where it is, good. Okay. So it's not going to block that access. It's going to be in front of that wooded lot, which is. Right, okay, understood. Right. Lot one. Okay. Her, her concern still, the concern yeah, her, still her is. Yeah, her concerns are, are other. Are the other impact of the property value and stuff like that. Right, so one, what, oh, you have a copy of it, so the, the noise, um, you already alluded to the idea that you don't want to put these near brooks so that there's clearly some environmentally sensitive 
yeah, uh, chemicals it, it, or things. They're uh, oil filled, right? So we don't want to put them in any area where something could happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's um, kind of a, so you can imagine that the, the they would want to know more about what your environmental concerns are when oil spills. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, impact on property value, I think knowing better than the maps we have, mm -hmm. where that is would probably help as well. Um, and I don't know that we're going to be able to address that uh, today. Uh, but at, at least now I feel like I have a better idea. I mean, going out there several months ago <laughs> and then coming in and having a map that's really bad is not a very helpful way to. Mm -hmm. and, and I know you say you didn't make the map, but um, that's just feedback then. Uh, how did this property owner know what you were putting there? She says both voltage, voltage regulator. Did the postcard say voltage regulator or did it show a picture of what was there, a description? So the original cards that went out, we were told to put the pictures on, but we, uh, not the pictures. We are going to put these labels on, and we didn't do that, so we made phone calls. Um, so you explained verbally? Yeah. So we situation. called, there's two butters, Morosky, and then the original person, the, the, the property owner in this case, uh, for this lot is in assisted living. Um, so we got in touch with her and she, the property owner asked that we reach out to her daughter. So Amy had spoken with her daughter and they asked questions about what was going in there and we gave her Mike's, uh, Mike's number and uh, asked her if she had any comments to submit them to the board. So. What is the noise output from these regulators? I don't know. Decimal wise, I honestly don't know. But it's audible. Um, most transformers do have an audible noise. Um, you know, if these aren't necessarily regulating, they're not going to be working, right? So it may fluctuate. There, there's a, there could be there could be a hum. I just without standing underneath one during certain times, I can't really tell. No, I think the, the, the should be rated, and it should have a um, you know a measure, a stack with which it's supposed to stay. Um, it can be measured with a dB meter at any time, and if it's not within spec. It probably needs repair or oil or whatever. And, and then obviously visually, I mean, if this person bought this piece of property, I don't care how many years ago, mm -hmm. thinking that perhaps it's going to be sold for development purposes. Again, I don't know what what their what their vision is for the property, but but let's just say hypothetically that it's for part of the part of their retirement plan. They're going to get X number of dollars, mm -hmm. and they're going to use it to live a comfortable retirement. Suddenly, a telephone pole is mm -hmm. not in the center of the property, but it's going to well, be visible. It would mean if they well, cleared it. If, if they clear cut it, cleared it. Yeah. Because yeah. right now, because it's wood, right? That was. I get it, that. It would but not be visible and would probably not detract from the property value. But it places a small constraint on. Like that would not be an area where you put your driveway. You could do something, and right. you might want to keep some trees there. Right. The the, the other option is is, and we did look at it in the field. Is the next pole, or, or can we find the next pole and to go either south or north of the next pole, or does that end up in this parcel? Um, see. Which yeah, one? I'd have to. Um, I thought it was near where that came out, but it's a little blurry over here, unless that's the no, shadow. It's almost near the, where's the, the, the brook that runs under the mm -hmm. road? Yeah, right? so we can't go. But you could go south of that. Far north. South of the next pole that wouldn't yeah. be. Yeah, but wouldn't that would be. still be in front of the same abutter's right. property. Yeah, it's still be in front of their property at some point. I don't yeah. know if that's more. If we go south, I mean, it's sort of, yeah. it's where it's open, right? So the house is on either side. The location here was kind of avoid the, Right. Looking out your front window, seeing it. Right. That's what makes this one a positive location. In the in the current, but not necessarily in the future. Right. And we can't forecast the future. Right. Okay. If you go to the next pole, up the line and south, go put your yeah. regulator south of that pole. Forty-one. I think, yeah. I think that little thing that looks like a pitchfork is the shadow of the pole. There. So that's still it's actually possibly more inconvenient because it's right in the middle. Okay the lot so yeah and I thought we didn't like 41 because you could see it from yeah 103 long plane road it was kind of right right, right. right across right. the street yeah 
Um, Why all this should be underground. Yeah. Well, could we? I mean, I would love to hear a motion to continue this, get information to the abutter, and because I, I agree you shouldn't put it near waterways if there's any uh, environmental issue that you may have, especially since sooner or later we're all drinking whatever goes into the groundwater, right? So um, be, it would be good to have that information. I don't know that we can do anything about number three, except that now we have a more accurate picture of where it is on the property line and that might uh, ameliorate her feelings that there would be a problem with property impact if it's over on the corner the first uh, 18 to 20 feet of her property uh, maybe 25 you know because that one's probably a few feet in um, it, it may be that number three is taken care of with uh, a better map um, then the, and you can get us specs on the noise from the regulator is that I mean, that seems like a reasonable way to proceed. I'm wondering if anyone would care to make that motion. I'd make a motion, and, and, and can we also make sure that the abutters are strongly encouraged to attend the continuing, continued meeting so that we can have a nice conversation so that we're not... Yeah, yeah, but, yeah if it's not settled by telephone or email beforehand, then... Because you'll go visit the abutters, I assume, in the interim? I'll respond to the requests. Yeah. I mean, I'm... Yeah. I don't necessarily do a door knock, but if there's requests, yeah. I can call and yeah. walk them through it. Yeah, I think I think communication is going to be the is the solution to this ninety five percent of the time. I mean, I do so just just kind of a realist look. So this regulator will be you know in front of that property, right? So if yeah. if you feel that is sort of the The, I don't think the that's reason it won't move forward, I would just like to know because I need to find an appropriate location. So if I have to go back and continue looking, I'd like to know. I mean, that's and why I know you made a motion and you're moving forward. Yeah, but, but no, that's why I'm encouraging you to communicate with her. Mm -hmm. I think we can't make a decision tonight. That's why the motion's made. And I'm hoping that before this is taken up again next, you know, two Wednesdays from today, whenever the next meeting is, that perhaps the communication lines will have been sufficient so that people come back and say, this is where everyone's comfortable with it. And then we can say, everyone's comfortable with it. Yeah. Let's go. But we can't possibly right. make the decision. Right. Especially if, if, if she's using the map that was provided, that's yeah. right. So I think one of my other takeaways is to make sure we have a, the better map. Right. right. Yes. Yeah. And, and I'm actually good. taking a screenshot and emailing it to Brian and Amy. <laughs> so that they'll actually um, know what we're what we're seeing here. I would encourage you to use the assessor's maps when these are drawn, and clearly it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure where Verizon, like what they use for a base map. Sometimes we have. I, I don't know. Either. That's not you know. Mm -hmm. The assessor's maps are typically pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I guess I, I would ask that again. I think it came up at our last meeting for a either a drawing or a picture or a sketch, whatever you want to call it, of what the regulator bank, whatever you call it here, looks like. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I'm sure this, you can talk to the property owner online and they may be envisioning something different than what you're explaining, so. You must have stock files, I mean, stock yes. photos, so, yeah. Yeah, we can, I mean, I can get Google kind of a picture, right? Of some, Google, this Google. is what it's gonna look like. Yeah, yeah. I think that's important to, to see that. Okay. okay. So I made the motion. Second. Uh, we, oh, we have to have a, a date and time specific. Uh, motion for the uh, next meeting. Date is October 23rd. And the time? The 30th. 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 Oh, the 30th. I'm sorry. Um, and the time would be 6.05. To what? Uh, continue? To continue. Okay. okay. And we all will also have the, um, the River Road petition. And yeah, they now yes. understand the quality of the maps that we expect to have. Oh, we already have the picture. If everyone's going to be here having a party, then we should see if we can get closure on the Christian Lane, I mean, the Christian Lane solar thing. Well, next at, at the same here. time. Yeah. Well, bring next in and we can all chat. Which one? Both? 
No, the, the, the one that's the bane of my existence in the middle oh. of the road that's been sitting there idle for a year after its completion. The other one looks completed, the other one looks completed too, so. <laughs> but not, like, not for a year. No, but. but that's my point there. though, I mean it's been a year. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's an eyesore. Okay. Okay. So, right. it, it just so you guys know. We should, we should vote. Okay. Oh yeah. All in right. favor? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. And Eversource did provide a, a town-wide map that we'd asked yes. for about, uh, if you want a bigger one, we have one. Okay. I think this is good enough for me. Okay. It shows that can post. When you send that stock photo okay. to the abutters, mm -hmm. would you send it to Brian as well so we have it in our files? Because I have no idea what the things look like. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, because you show uh, your circuit substations here, you've got, what, two, two different sizes. It, it doesn't mean anything to me unless you show me a picture or a description. Picture or, I'm sorry, what was that? Your yeah. substations, you list two different sizes. Well, three, one, three, two. Which is the yeah. substation? The regulators. Regulators, one, two, three, four different, three different sizes. <clears throat> so those are circuit feeds coming out of separate substations. Um, so this map is a, We'll call it critical infrastructure map, critical facilities map. We have them for every town. Wow. They show police, fire, um, pump. Um, there's usually other facilities which include schools, sometimes nursing homes around here, hospitals. Um, so the, the 18 G3, G6, G8, 22 B3, those are different circuits coming out of substations. The 18 G comes out of a Podic substation. 22 B is a Cumberland. So Podic is a an Amher substation, Cumberland is a Greenfield substation. Um, this just shows the circuits, how they come into the town. Um, yeah, because a lot of these are not, the facilities are these, um, it says regulators here. Yeah. Uh, and so see how there's those like three little dots? I missed it the first time from Brian showed me this. So they're there, there, there. But do they all look the, the same? Are they all gonna look the same? So th yeah, that's, that's a good. There's, there seems to be two sizes of little uh, so, uh, regulators so shown on the map. So there's a single regulator? And those would be the single pole one, mounted. small, kind of almost square pieces. Okay, that's these they, over here. Um, so for example, on, on the ones um, in the West Waitley, yep. on Masterson, Haydenville, and <laughs> Weber Road, those were smaller ones, single pole. Single pole. So those are indicated by this kind of small okay. square with only two little green dots on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then these others seem to be, well, actually, I guess they're circles. Um, uh, over on Christian Lane, uh, there would be, it's indicated with kind of three circles. Mm -hmm. Not to scale, probably. But this is why no, we need a picture because I have still right. right. No, I know, but this is, I know so the ones that are, yeah. So, ones that are, <coughs> yeah. so the ones that are, are the big long ones with three circles, those are the ones that are going to be 18 feet across with the three transformer cans mm -hmm. on top, one on River Road. Uh, one on Christian Lane, one on Long Plain Road, and it's the one on Long Plain Road that we were talking about earlier. Um, then uh, I see one, two, three in West Waitley that are single poles with single uh, regulators. Yep. Okay, good. I wanted to make sure I understood that map because at first I didn't, I didn't actually see those things, and I was like, where the heck are those regulators? So I did also put on here, I put G for solar generator. Um, I know uh, that was another conversation they came up you know where are the generating sites in hindsight I probably just should have put generation facility because I'm not positive if they're all strictly solar or if there's other sort of generation there but yeah. the G's just delineate um, current and then the future yeah. Christian lane site. And these are of a, of a minimum size so things below like 10. Yeah this you're yeah. not going to see house mounted house or is mounted mounted okay. Okay. here so um, no. Okay. Thank you for this. This is helpful. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, well, are we ready to go to our next, or is there more questions on this map? Yes, the one here you, sh you show, I think, the wrong intersection. Uh, long Plain and Christian Lane, you show both sides. It's. I think there's a private one on the other side. No, but should that one be the one down here by the school? This one be down here? By River Road? Yeah. There's one on by the school, as well as this one. That's the two next amp yeah. ones. 
Yeah, it could be. It could be that one's misplaced, mismarked. Right. Do you see where I'm talking? No. So I'm looking at Christian Lane, right? So, so we got. Come here, maybe. It's just yeah. Yeah. This is easy to show you. Yeah. Yep. Right now, there's, there's one here. That's the, the, the but name. There's, you're right, next amp, and there's one here being proposed. I don't, there's none there to my knowledge. Yeah, so I must, I misplaced it. Yeah, you misplaced it. It's got to be over here. Yeah. Yep, this is further down. Than yeah, further down. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, so at this point, we can move along to old business. Um, we've uh, got one Thanks, item guys. To, Thank you. to appoint additional members to the ad hoc Center School Visioning Committee and discuss the next step, like the first meeting and a site visit. My understanding is we have three more names. We do. Of people. Brian, you want to chat about that? Sure, there's an updated list in the packet here. Um, Where is this list? It's uh, this one. It should be near the top. Oh, right there. One right down. Oh, no, that's not it. Just no, that's enough license. License holders. Like board appointments. And good classes. So after the meeting, I had a, uh, I spoke with J.D. Ross and asked him if he wanted to be on the committee, and he would. Oh, great. And I also received emails from Leslie Harris and Jenny Morrison about their interest in okay. being on the committee. So, and I think Fred also had talked with Don or Mayu. Yeah, Mayu. Um, but he wasn't necessarily committed, uh, able to right. commit to him. And he's a real term South Korea field yeah. here and said so. Did he respond to you? No. Okay. So those people are willing to serve yeah. on the committee as well. We have um, currently we have Judy Marklin, Becky Jones, Mark Boussier, Keith Bardwell, Paul and Taya, Mary Stewart, Marissa Hashuzume, Melissa Mike Stroll, Rich Korpieski, Stan Scordillis, and David Swift, and Ian you know, Fred. Um, yeah. And I know where JD brings the table. What is Jenny? And, what do Jenny and Leslie? Or do they have skill sets? I don't. I don't know Jenny. Uh, Leslie's the the manager, <coughs> the farm manager. Of oh, okay. Okay. Um, I would have no objection to appointing uh, all three of these folks to the to the center school committee, especially if they volunteered and are. Willing to bring at least energy, if nothing else, to the and, committee. And then I would close the size to this. Yeah, it is getting kind of big, huh? <laughs> yeah. Unless we get the realtor. Well, right. It, but other than that, yeah. if that specific skill set suddenly becomes available, available, I agree. But otherwise, it's it's getting it's getting big now. Right. Okay. Right. So can I hear a motion? I guess I. You can make a motion. I please. move that we appoint these three wonderful folks to the center school committee. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next steps. And then uh, the other appointments, should we do those now too? We can while we're here, sure. While we're here, um, there's uh, Council on Aging, uh, Lois Hunt and Denise Govoni. Yep, they both um, submitted. Yes. One of whom appears to have real estate. I saw that. <laughs> appraiser, a real estate appraiser. How do you know that? Um, because it says in the letter that she wrote saying why she wanted to be on the Council on Aging. Oh, I see. So if we can well, twist, uh, it's the next letter in the packet. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we can win her over to the dark side and get her on the other as well. They're new to town, at least recently arrived, maybe in the last couple of years, and seem to want to get involved. <coughs> and I don't know if she would be interested, but maybe if, uh, she was asked and we specifically say, well, we saw you have those real estate appraisal skills and maybe those are kind of close enough for what we need on this committee. Well, what, what we'll do is perhaps at the next Council on Aging, if I can <laughs> possibly attend, I can have that conversation, if I can make it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. Uh, but I would have absolutely no um, hesitation to appoint them to the Council on Aging. And that will give us Five. Five members. Which is so much better than three. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, okay. Well, I will move that Lois Hunt and Denise Bovoni be appointed to the Motion. Council on Aging. Motion. Or second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. That's done. Huh? Um, and then open space. Good, 
is also on here. Yep. I don't see a specific letter for it on that. No, but they've all agreed. Yeah, okay. So um, there are existing members on it? Or is this there, no, there are no existing members. It, it has been, it's been dormant for, it's it's been been dormant. Dormant. Yeah. for a, a dozen years. Six. Yeah. Um, so I, I move we appoint Tom Litwin, Paul Newland, Pete Westover, and Donna Wiley to the Open Space Committee. Um, I believe my name is supposed to be on there too. Okay, what's happening? And I, and I, and I add to a nomination for uh, John. Unless I don't need to have, have my name on it, but I believe I have to have it on there. Why did you say that? Well, because I'm on it. Well, if you want to be on it, vote and be on it. He's got to follow the rules just like everybody else. Yeah. What's, uh, what's the goal of this committee, the function of this committee? We're going to update the open space plan and then we're going to uh, probably do some trail mapping. Updating the open space plan is, is a prerequisite for a lot of the trails grant settings right. from the state. So if you don't have that, you... Right. And, and our open course. space plan was done in 2006. Six. It was good yes. for five years. The state considers them good for five years. Right. Okay. And it's a in excess of a 100 page document that I'm just so eager to get. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> lucky you. Well, you've got a good team to it's work It's a great with group. People. And we're going to add a couple more people to it. So it's a great group. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, I've made a motion. Sir. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, those two are done. All right, so back to old business. Um, we need to discuss the next steps in relation to the reopening of the club castaways. And that is basically reviewing the conditions um, yeah. publicly here, so we're all kind of on the same page. And I'm going to turn that over to Brian because I think he's got sure. better recollection and papers on all this. We didn't finish. Can we just go back to the center school real quick about next steps for the center school? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to skip that. That's okay. Uh, next steps, first meeting and site visit. So, I mean, that's, I guess that's the idea. So we have about 14, well, if I count right, we have 14 people. Um, mm -hmm. Fred and I were talking or, um, last week that it might be a good idea to um, have people tour the school, well, or at least walk through the school. Yeah. And, and, yeah. The, and the property, so maybe we'll set up some type of site visit um, and then combine that with the first meeting. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure that we really want to meet in the building. Um, it, would, it would speed the meetings up. It would speed, it would speed the meetings I up, know. but it's not very accessible. It's not, not handicap accessible. We've been down that path before. And we're also not going to heat it. So. Yeah. Right. So, well, if it's in the next week, we, wait, don't, don't we still have the old um, uh, propane heater from the old. Uh, oh, in the police station? No, in the town offices that. Oh. You would be cold in the front, but burning up on the back, or, you know. We could just pull that thing in. Um, yeah. I, I would request strongly that everyone be given, I'm assuming they've seen it, the charge to this committee so that they understand the absolute parameters of this committee. Yep. And what we expect out of this committee specifically. Yep. And, and I guess I, as Brian said, I mentioned a, a site visit. I, I, I think that should be strongly encouraged, especially then people that have never been inside the building. Otherwise, you're just guessing what you want to do with the building. Even if you've been inside the building, very few people yeah. have had the fortune of being in the attic. Right. That, yeah, the yes, attic I have as not well. Been so, attic. Yeah. Have you been in the yard? I've not been Oh, you should go on this tour. Yeah. I, if I am available. It is yeah. right out of Hitchcock. If you do it during my physics class, I will not. If you ever saw the birds, you know, the big hole in the, in the attic? Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. Need your rabies shot. And I still think it, it, it may be possible to have the meeting there. I mean, there's chairs in a, in a basement. I'm just concerned about accessibility. Of well, accessibility. Yeah, and it's freezing. And no, we, we cannot have a public meeting. But I, I understand there's a facility within walking distance uh, with sidewalks oh, of sure. some <laughs> right. quality okay. uh, I think joining the road, them. I looked down and I shuddered as I was thinking someone's going to trip on them. Yeah. Yeah. I used the road. Okay. I honestly did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did. Yeah, we, I was going to say, we did not require people to no, we can't do have that. all wheel drive on their but, boots or but something. But I think that would be the likely. Yeah. Maybe maybe half hour at the center school and then the, the first meeting at the town hall. Yeah. 
please drive. I think that sounds right. I know liability. finding a time so, when 15 right. people can be there is going to be. I think you just pick it. And so you got to pick it and. What yeah, what usually done. works is we could we could send out three or four dates, send out a doodle poll, and yeah. we'll just pick a date that most people can make, and if people can make it, they can make it. If there are a fair number of people who are gainfully employed on that list. So, so it might have to be uh, an five. evening or a weekend. And it, yeah, and it can't, and it's going to get dark pretty quick. So yeah, got to do it by five. Yeah. Five. Which makes me think of, uh, I mean, we is this committee allowed to meet on weekends? Um, I know often public meetings aren't necessarily supposed to be on. Right. We could do a site visit. Right? You can do a site visit on a on a weekend, Joyce, and just yeah. have the meeting on the evening day. Do a site visit. Yeah, we can do the field. Leave the tour. Sure. Yeah. I or Keith. Keith is familiar with it as well. He's on the committee yeah. too. Because because if we do have a lot of gainfully employed people, then it does, and it's getting dark yeah. at five. It does seem like a weekday will not work well. Of course. We'll, well if, if, if they meet, if they meet before meeting. daylight savings, it works. If they meet after daylight savings, changes. It's done. Right. What does that change? End of October usually beginning yeah. of November. So I'll send out some weekday choices and some weekend choices. Okay. That way people can say people that. Okay. And then that would be the idea is that we would have a site visit then this yeah, initial say, meeting November and go over the charge and what yeah. what the goal is and then okay. go from there. All right. Great. Okay. Now the topic that we all love to discuss is the next steps relation to reopening of club castaways. Yep. So I'm gonna turn it over to Brian now. So the word on the street is that the word on social media and according to Dan the sign of the door. And the newspaper article. And the newspaper article that Jonathan's quoted in. I don't remember saying that, but that's okay. There may be newspaper. <laughs> The Valley Advocate, the well read publication. Okay. It certainly out of context. Uh, yeah, context. Certainly out of context, but. Well, they took it out of the, one yeah. of the meetings here, though. Hey, you know, there, but for the yeah. grace of God, any one of us could have said something. So. Yeah. Most of us did. Yeah. Um, so I just want to make sure we're all on the same page in communicating with the police chief and the police department and the new owners as to what the board expects from everybody. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, so the, the opening that they're projecting is October 29th, that's a Tuesday. Um, it's typically not one of the, the nights that we would require police detail. Although in talking with, uh, with, talking with Jim this morning um, and reviewing these conditions, he, he has the right under the conditions to declare it or define it as a special event, um, which he's inclined to do. I know we had a conversation with the new owners today after I, after he and I spoke because he hadn't heard about openings or anything like that. So yeah. um, I spoke with Jim again this afternoon. He said that they have details scheduled for October 29th. Um, that's the date of the projected opening, and then de then the regular details for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. What hours was he going to be on the 29th? Um, that's a good question. I'll ask him. And what is their opening time today? Um, i tell you that. I don't know. I haven't spoken to them directly about it yet. Um, I think I saw something on the flyer about 7 p.m. maybe, but I don't know if they're going to open earlier. I have questions, but I won't jump the gun. You keep going around. So, so it sounds. Well, Fred, we can I'll follow up on with Jim about the about the hours. What what do we think the hours should be for the police detail for the for the special event? I mean, we have one hour before and one hour after, right? Yeah, one hour within two hours. So that's what the hours will be. When they say they're starting, then that we'll go an hour before, and when they say they're ending, we'll go an hour after. Right. Um, so. First event, they, we got to. Yeah, we should we we shouldn't back off on our own. No. Um, I mean, if, if I was doing a grand opening, I'd want to maximize the crowd. Otherwise, that's a grand and opening. Yeah. Um, and and in relation to the variance, um, so 
the conditions for the granting of the variance from the 20, so we, if you recall, we granted a variance from the requirement that there be a 24 seven police detail. 24 seven police detail is the default. Um, so we, the board voted to um, have this four month probationary period, um, mm -hmm. being on the date that operations start for that four month period. Um, so like we said, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 9.30 to 1.30, or during special events. Uh, the detail officer is available, then the license, then the new owner shall have on duty at least two security personnel. Um, so as part of this, we said that, or the board said that, um, this is condition four, shall review the licensee's operations under the terms of the variance at its second monthly meeting of every month during the four month time period mm -hmm. um, for the purpose of evaluating safety and security at the licensed premises. And to consider whether the variance should be continued in effect, modified or rescinded. Um, number five, it says at the end of the four month period, this record shall be and decide whether or not to continue the variance in its then current form, grant a new variance with without condition, including reduction elimination of veto hours or rescind the variance. So, up through those four months, it's kind of an ongoing evaluation. And at four months, it's kind of mm -hmm. we should be making a, a decision. Um, so, so let's uh, let's say that the deal is on October 29th. So we should be meeting the second. It should be the second meeting in November, right? Mm -hmm. November, December, January, and February. I, I got to cut in here for a second. Yep. Our conversations were that our concern was mostly when they were fully stocked and ready to maximize their capacity, which was, I believe, after they had done internal renovations, that if they were just going to open the doors and have the same whatever. Yep that that was less of a concern than when they were really geared up and everything was, was set up appropriately. Yep. As I read the plans, <clears throat> and maybe I missed something, but how much of this construction and, 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 upgr and, and upgrade work will have been done by October 29th? Uh, my understanding is it's not a lot. So, the subject to what we'll talk about in a second about conditions. So I'm concerned that the clock is going to start to tick before it should start to tick. Then you can continue it after the four month period. Yeah, we didn't at that time decide continue or not. Or yeah. If you well, but, but but the clock on the the clock on the four months was supposed to start to tick when work had been realized. No, but but the, but the variance would have to still apply before the clock starts ticking in that case. So it starts ticking when they start opening, but we have. The, you know, if they're, they're going to drag their feet on it, we, at the end of four months, we're like, hey, you know, you said you were going to renovate, you said things were going to, we want to continue it until we see what it's like right. after you've renovated. Right, because they clearly said they were going to renovate before they reopen, and that's not happening. Yeah. Right. And, and yeah, so. As, I, long as, we, as long as we're on the same page yeah. on this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree that that was right. what we. I mean, I'm not out to kill their business, I just want to make sure they're abiding by what we agreed to. Well, but if you look at one of the conditions here, number 17 is, it says they got 60 days after issuance of the license to do something to the building and parking lot. Yep, so that's the next, that's that's the next, the next part we're going to talk yeah. about. We'll, we'll get it. Okay. Uh, okay. But yeah, so at, at, at the end of the four month period, um, if you don't feel like they've reached full potential and that there's, there's still out lingering concerns, then, then you're within the right to um, extend the variance. Correct. And that puts, if they do open on October 29th, it puts February 29th as the day. The, that's the end of that first four month period. It seems to coincide nicely with our second February meeting. Okay. So. Yep. But that, that variance is just for the police, uh, police detail. Right. Security it has nothing Correct. to do with the other things are independent, right? Yeah, say the conduct of the building or the people or whatever. Yeah, right. right. And and that is shown here in these other two agreements. 
Yeah. Well, they're. Con I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily characterize them as agreements. They're. They're conditions Condition. that the board imposed on the grant okay. of the licenses. Okay. Um, and that uh, would apply any time. These after are, October 29th. These are in effect now. In perpetuity until. Okay. Until the board elects to change them. Um, or they uh, give up their license, I guess. Um, but so, looking at these conditions, I guess we, we tried to mirror them for, for a lot of this, for the entertainment license and, and the alcohol license, just so there was consistency. But it's Fred alluded to number 17. It says, for the purpose of promoting security and safety at the license premises, the licensee shall complete the following improvements no later than 60 days after the issuance of the license. Um, install a new video surveillance system for the license premises. Um, that's what we had talked about. Install new or and or modify exterior lighting to increase general visibility. Construct and maintain an eight foot high wall made of masonry product um, to replace that. I think it's chain link fence right now. The yeah. smoking, the, I think it's called the smoking area, the break area mm -hmm. between the building and the, the wetlands in the back. Um, there was supposed to be an eight foot high stockade fence along the eastern side of the parking lot, so that's along the along that, that back yeah. area. Um, and um, to remove the four parking spaces identified with the arrows, and I think pretty much that this was done a while ago, um, to take away the those parking areas, but we can make sure yeah. those to increase the. Yeah, it's hard to see when you drive by, but the bus went down the parking lot. So we'll <coughs> uh, I'd, have to, I'd have to drive into the parking lot to find out. Because it's kind of uphill, so I. If those parking lot, yeah. parking spaces, yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah, you can't see them that stop sign. I mean, you can't even right. see uh, State Road from that stop sign. Yeah. Yeah, so those are. Those are the ones that said that they would be done within 60 days. Um, and the 60 days would be about October 22nd, you're saying? I think so. Around October 22nd. So if I recall correctly, the, the, the date of the issuance of the license was on uh, August 22nd. They closed on the they closed on the sale on August 16th. Mm -hmm. uh, but, the, it's, but it's as of the license thing, it's not as of the close, I believe. It's as of the issuance of the license. I talked to the town council this afternoon, and the issuance of the license is when they would have when they would have picked it up. Right and now, that was, some of these things they have to get building permits for, don't they? Yeah. yeah. And have those been pulled? Not to my, I not to, I don't know. Not to my knowledge. Well, they all have to go through conservation. What's that? They, they, they also have to go through pond pond. Pond. Right. So, so, they, so they may have a. And the last time I checked, today's the uh, ninth or eighth, ninth of October. Yeah. So, not gonna I mean, so the purpose of, of us going through this is I want to put together this list of things that need to be done, mm -hmm. um, and I can send them out the list of, of, of things that the board thinks are required in the conditions, and we can send it out to them. And so the 60 days is from August 22nd? I believe that was the date that you picked yeah. it up. Yeah. August, September, so that's October. So the first, yeah. Well, 19th, whatever, I mean, 20th, 21st, whatever. It's okay. Going, you know. Yeah. So that's before their grand opening. Right, but it's only 12 days away. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I mean, unless my math, unless math changed. Yeah. And today is the ninth, right? And they, I know we don't have, a, a, there's rumblings of, oh, it's still being talked about by the Conservation Commission. I don't know what that means if they have something that's really going to hold it up or if it's just how long it takes to get things through the conservation commission. I think it's just how long it takes things to get to the concom. It takes a while. <coughs> yeah. Unless you really know what you're doing. Yeah, so. I can check in with, uh, I'll, I didn't have a chance to earlier, but I'll, I'll email Scott Jackson to see what, if anything, has been applied for and what, if any, conversations have taken place. Do they have okay. any meeting coming up soon? Coscom, okay. they advertise a meeting, but it's for two matters unrelated to okay. this establishment. This month in October? Yeah, yeah. I'll pull up the calendar. Yeah, it's coming up soon. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's one a week from today. Um, and sixteenth. Um, and it's got a legal notice that is um, something to do with so they're going to hold the meeting here, Wetlands Protection Act. Uh, oh, uh, there's a lot 29 East Woodley, Waitley, and then 148 North Street, Waitley. So yeah, unrelated. So, so that's next week. Yeah. Um, and uh, you said there might be another one on the things. Oh, I'm not. I'm not aware of any other. We right. two, I think. Yeah. There, yeah, I've all, I'm only seeing one, but uh, if there's another one, I'm not seeing it here in October. It might be in November. No, you've named the two. Oh, those are the, yeah, okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. So that's, um, all right. So, well, I think then basically the communication to them would be we expect these things to be taken care of. And uh, do you have a plan? To do that. So, by the 20th or 29th? Would the, would the, would the, would the, so I know I'm going to get asked this question most likely. Right. Would the board be willing to meet prior to that to have discussions with the new owners? I mean, in I theory, agree. sure, but I don't know what my time well, would like. The purpose just to extend that time period? Um, Why would we meet? Well, I don't think, well, so you're not meeting until October 30th. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to change the conditions, but they're not going to meet. I mean, they, I mean, it does appear that they're, they they might not meet, so they will right. presumably ask us. And I, I think this did come up at the time that they said, you know, if we are in conservation trouble for putting in a wall, we might not get it in in sixty days. What are you going to do? Shut us down? Um, and then they'd say, I think we said we well, should come back and talk to us. Well, right, but right. but and Joyce, you're right. Yeah, yeah. but. They haven't come back to talk to Forgive us. me, yeah. but they closed on the 16th of August, and they could have put in applications to ConCom. They could have pulled building, building permits. It hasn't happened, but they have had the time to schedule a grand opening. Yep. No, I, I think, yeah, and I, I don't know if they have actually. What I remember about the building permit process is you apply for it, and then that application goes around to the various people who have to sign off. Okay. Right. So, uh, I, I, if this is really just how long it takes Concom to do something, that's one thing. If it, they waited until October first to make the application, that's another thing. We don't know when they may have applied for. If at all. If at all. Right. Right. And so I guess. So I, we. I'm not we sure. might. We. I don't think we can decide here whether or not to extend that. Sixty Fair. days. Um, but it's pretty clear they're not likely to make it. So what? Are we willing to do? To are we willing to say, well, you have to put off your opening until you get these things done? That's. I mean, I guess that that's kind of what you know, you're you're sort of asking. Like, what is it that? Right. Um, if they ask. Yeah. What can I do? The board. Right. Right. To, right. to meet. Are you willing to meet? I guess. Yeah. Not necessarily. I mean, and I would not like to make a different yeah. decision, but I guess I would like to know them. when they started applying and trying to move them the Conservation Commission along if that's really where it's stuck right now. Uh, in the absence of that information, it's hard for me to say how how generous I would want to be on being, that's but right. yeah, that's, that's it right. just seems like that, well, um, yeah. Then, then should we, we move our, up our next board meeting to, let's say, the 23rd, a regular board meeting, and, and talk about this, because it's, it's before the grand opening. If you do it on the 30th, I mean, we're caught in the, in the, in the middle here. Uh, they had grand opening, and, and we didn't what, approve extensions or conditions or. or well, it's but look down on us if we have to be meet after the grand opening. No, 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 no. As I, I as I read it, Fred, they had 60 days. Yeah. They okay. didn't. It, it, if they don't meet these requirements within yeah. 60 days, we can disallow their grand opening. Okay, that's position <clears throat> you want to take. Okay. Well, because they haven't. I mean. We, when did we find, how did we find out about the grand opening? In the, in the media? Yeah. Our yeah. police chief Social wasn't media. notified. No. Okay. But we, so, have, we have to meet to make that decision. So I'm saying, yeah. if we're going to meet on the 20th, 20th or 23rd, 
Why not move our regular meeting till then? But we did we just entertain. schedule a poll hearing for the 30th at 6.05, so we could have an additional meeting on the 23rd, but uh, uh, I'm just saving one meeting if there are. We, we may have to meet on the 23rd. For this specific yeah. person. Um, I have another thought now. Oh, the other thing that, unless you want to have others, unless you have other specific items on this to talk about in the checklist, Brian. It's just one other item. Let Why me. don't you go and then I'll. Okay. Yeah. Just the other the other component of the entertainment license, and I'll I'll, I'll check in with Jim specific, Jim Savine specifically about this, but it's just find out what his comfort level is with the the formal security plan. Um, I, I, I think they got pretty close to formalizing it. Jeez. 14 months ago, however long this has taken, but um, I'll double check in with him to make sure. This, this just, this isn't what I was going to mention, but it just dawned on me. Remember the conversation we had, how challenging it potentially was to find police officers available for a detail, and that was a concern. Yep. Didn't we have some length of time that Jim needed to know in order to about the special event, et cetera, so that he had time to secure the, that detail? If we did, it, it never got uh, it never got transferred into writing. But there's going to be the, the other part of this is that. Another part of the, the condition of the variance that we didn't talk about is number six, and that's the licensee director security shall meet with the Waitley Chief of Police on a weekly basis during the formal probationary period. Um, well, but if you go back to two, two E says if details and available, they should have security. Right, right. right. But you need a certain amount of time to, to find that. I'd rather right. have Do, Don't we already certain. have a policy about details? about? Having a, you know, there might be a certain notice requirement. A notice requirement, yeah, yeah. policies. Already. I mean, he hasn't even been officially notified. Right, no. Well, that you know of. They had a phone conversation this morning because Jim called them. Yeah. I would not call that official notification. Right, and we, that might be an expectation to be down as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not necessarily all that inclined to schedule a meeting for them on the 23rd I, under the no. given conditions. But I will keep it open just in yeah. case. Okay. But I agree with you, Joyce. Yeah. Is my, my concern, and, and it may not be germane or anything we can really do about it, but I remember I was chuckled at when I inferred that perhaps there was a problem that because of the increased incidents at the castaways in the uh -huh. final months, that I was chuckled that, that would, they would maintain the current management structure. I know. I literally I know. was, I, and, I, and I was just like, well, all right, I, I, I do have a sense of what I'm talking about when it comes to these things. And, and lo and behold, the current management structure is in place. Manager. At least the manager. Well, I don't at least, right, manager but, the man, but, but so the person responsible for making sure that this place stays out of trouble. And, and clearly they're very good at marketing because there was increased traffic over that six month period of time. No question at all about it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I, I, I raised the I, issue, if it's the same manager, I have issues. And it's the same manager. And I was literally laughed at. Who, who left? I, th I thought they were here saying they weren't going to have the same manager. They were bringing new people. Okay, so they took me for a fool. Right. Well, they didn't yeah. tell us what they're actually going to do then either. So they never have. Yeah. yeah. So that is. Uh, right. So I, I, I'm. I'm I, 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 I do think, because if I had known that the manager was going to remain constant, I would have asked for the manager to be here in, a, in, in the hearing. Yeah. And I think I inferred that. Well, they, 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 well, they may not have known they were going to hire that manager at that time. And then that manager had left, right? 
Yeah. So, so I, it, but not too long before they shut down, I don't think. Right. Yeah. Just I don't remember like, when they shut down. Do, does anybody? Uh, July, really late July, wasn't it? Or sometime in July because they, the they just didn't want to have any more incidents. Oh, it was the end of the, end of the month. You're right. Yeah. Well, so, right. okay, so she wasn't around the last couple of months. And, and I think it's her great marketing is her, but we all know that the incidents of mm -hmm. inappropriate stuff was taking place in those since the turn of the calendar this year. Yep. Under that person, a, a good deal under that person's watch. Okay. Can we so, have a executive session with our attorney to talk about this and see what we could do or not do or what legal things we're going to get into? In relation to, in relation to what? Oh. To their, uh, I, for example, well, I guess. I, I guess to the variance, or or the grand opening, or the 60-day time period for conditions. Can we well, I think that it, no, no, I think the 60-day time period. If they need more time, the it's on FCAT. They need to come back to us and and talk. Okay, and they've not really done that. Maybe they're unaware that 60 days has passed. That will, sounds like that will get taken care of with, right. Now they've not notified us of a grand opening. Maybe that, maybe that's not true. As far as, that's right, it could right. be. Perhaps we shouldn't believe everything we read in the paper. Perhaps we shouldn't believe everything we read in the paper. Um, and you can say, well, you know, we heard, we don't believe everything on social media, but we're pretty sure you're not gonna get this stuff done in 60 days. We'd be pleasantly surprised, uh, and we're pretty sure you've got to come talk to us, and that's October 30th. But but the part where I think we're, we're missing some here is is uh, the police chief and, and what not so much security plan, but how he feels and whether he can meet the needs of, of, of uh, off-duty officers here. To, uh, and well, I, like I for think, the first week there. I think it's good. important to to have a. A meeting with him and us, and, and I, I still think it would involve our town council to see what leeway we have and, and how much flexibility we have in, in the variance, and, and to avoid, uh, I guess, future complications or lawsuits or whatever you want to call it. Can, can I make a suggestion to that? I, I get what you're saying, Fred. Yeah. Just a thought, because the calendar is not our friend here. Right. Um, not to make more work for Joyce, but as the police liaison. Joyce, Brian, Chief Savini, and Council need to have a sit down. Well, okay, if that. Or, yeah. or I imagine Council could fill in. Whatever. Yeah. So, or we could come up with what questions we really right. need Council to address, and it might be more um, efficient, cost efficient to send those uh, questions by email. Um, right. I've spoken with. I spoke with Jim on two occasions about this today. I had a conversation with the town council about some of the legal aspects of yeah. what the other um, the conditions and stuff like that, and what happens in the case of um, you know, not able to fulfill those conditions. So some of those conversations have been yeah. have been happening. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so, Fred, are you comfortable if we just sort of put it in put Joyce's it lap for a while? I'm okay. And then she can come back to us and say, boy, that didn't go well. That didn't go okay. well. But then how are we going to know what happens with their conversations? Is that? Well, right. I'll have conversations yeah. with them. They'll be in the okay. conversation. Yeah. And so when would this, this would occur before what? The 29th? Or 30th? What, what's Ask. the time period? Well, we'll are we looking, see how are responsive you looking they are. I'll start with, with sending a, to let them know what we talked about tonight. Yeah. To the town council, you're saying? No, I'll, I'll send a, a communication to them that puts them know yeah. what the board discussed tonight and oh. about concerns you have about them not being able to right. fulfill the conditions in a timely manner. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. And I, by the way, I would encourage the, um, and I'm sorry to cut in. And, I'm, and I feel badly dumping on this new employee, but um, I think that we need to include the new manager. She's going to be there on premises all the time, and they're not. 
Mm -hmm. okay. So she's the one who wants to deliver. That's a good idea. Okay. All right, I think we can get this done by 7 30. Maybe even okay. 7 25. That would be wonderful. Just to okay. gain, you know, gain fives are tonight. Okay. So, uh, next item on the agenda to discuss and vote to set license fees for calendar year 2020. <clears throat> and uh, in our packets, we had uh, a comparison with some uh, neighboring towns. So, let me pull that up here. So, Amy put the, Amy updated this chart for these are so. Yeah. Uh, licensing fees are on calendar year. I think the only thing in municipal municipalities are on calendar year. Yeah. Um, so this is a comparison. I really pretty you think pretty we're even with yeah, even a little bit high, but everybody likes revenue. Right, and there's somewhere we're lower than our neighbors, but mostly we're either at or a little bit higher than our neighbors. Yeah. Um, is is the common victualler's license for Hatfield a typo? Uh, maybe I'm not sure. I was I would want to. I googled it quickly. I couldn't find the answer. But if yeah. if that's the case, we should we should up ours. Yeah, we're then it's right. Yeah, but it's so out of far out of whack with everybody else. Right. I agree. Um, that that one caught my let's eye. Not use, let's not use that as a basis of comparison. Right. So on that no. particular one, we we're on the lower side. As we um, are with the in uh, license. On that one, but on the alcohol licenses, we are either highest or second highest um, on those in general. Yeah, even on the package store. Um, oh, there's one, yeah, I guess Deerfield is higher on the package store with all liquors in it. But so we're, we're on the higher side for the alcohols. Um, then uh, on things like the jukebox, the common victuals license, the in holder, um, those were on the lower side, but those are not huge numbers anyway. Um, I guess our motor vehicles, the class one, class two, were sort of you know mid to high range on that as well. Entertainment the license were the highest. So I, I guess I don't feel compelled to make a lot of changes here unless you have some arguments about um, any of these that... My only question is when, I, I believe, and again, my memory banks are, you know, subject to questions sometimes, I guess, but we did the seasonal alcoholic beverage on premise the year that Quant Quant opened, correct? Because this was done for Quant Quant. That's oh. my understanding of uh, why okay. it was. Because, well, because it didn't fit, because it was just seasonal. What, yeah, what I remember was we had a seasonal that was a six month, uh, and they would wanted to prorate it. Right. Like, if it's not exactly six months, can we do it on a, you know, if it were five months, can we prorate it? If it were eight months, can we prorate it? And I think that uh, my memory of that meeting is that we said, yeah. Right. Yeah. But we are they just six months still? I don't have to know. They're what, May to November, May 1 to November 1, right? Is that what it is? Is that their time period open? I don't know. So what is yeah. it? I thought they used to have some of this. Yeah, I thought, I, they're not. Is it still in use now? No. Well, it is some, but I don't know, middle of winter if it is. Oh. Yeah. I mean, are they doing holiday stuff? Um, no, I don't think so. I think it's. I no, think, I think the license, yeah. the license wouldn't be in effect. Okay. Yeah. So it may, it may be that it's number. that it's six months, and that what we had talked about there, they did yeah. not end up following through on whatever plans to be open earlier or later or something like that. I'm so, wondering, what, based on what we've learned, do we want to perhaps alter that or no? Just leave it. I. I'm just raising the question. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah it's proportional mm -hmm. here. Right? Okay. So didn't they come in and extend their season? They came in and did a presentation. No, not that long ago. No, we talked about but they modified their thing. special permit, right? Yeah. But that was a presentation call. done. They had their lawyer here. Uh, I wasn't here for that, so it might have been more than a year ago. I don't, well, I think I don't it, remember. It was to the, the, you were I think it was to the ZBA. Oh, I see. Yeah, I, well, I'm not sure it was to this board. Was it another board? We'd have to go ZBA for the well, maybe special it was permit. ZBA. Yeah, because I'm thinking yeah. I don't remember that either. Yeah, yeah. good point. It might have been the ZBA. 
That's why you wouldn't have been. Right. That's why I wasn't there. I just want to make sure we discuss these things. I don't need to change it. I just want to make sure that. Yeah. And I'm fine with it. Yeah. yeah that's fine. Okay. Okay. Fred. Yeah. Any other comments? No. Okay. Well, um, this is something we need to vote on. So I would uh, move that we vote to uh, keep the license fees where they are for 2020. Um, Second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Okay. Excellent. Oh, we might be done soon. Um, we've got some surplus property to declare a set of custom fitted firefighting personnel protective equipment and a Dell computer. Uh, do you have any more details to give us on those? Um, so, in terms of the, the firefighting gear, there was a um, individual who joined the Waitley Fire Department um, and they um, fitted that person for gear and shortly thereafter they took a, um, they had a move, well they're no longer with the Waitley Fire Department, they're with a different fire department. Uh -huh. um, the gear is custom fitted. Um, so, so we have to hire a person the exact same size and so shape? So we need to find okay. a person the exact same yeah. size and shape. Oh. Or, um, or we can, um, so this still needs to be done through a competitive bid process. I said that. There's interest from the, the fire department who this person <laughs> is working for um, that they would be willing to purchase the gear from oh. the fire department. It still needs to be an open and competitive bid process. Okay. I'm not sure we're going to get many bidders, but we still need to <coughs> okay. go for them. Right. Um, okay. So it's really valuable and we should get a great price for it. Yeah. I don't want to lose our competitive advantage by That's saying right. something else. Well, we should be in executive session right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we have it's to, it's yeah. used equipment. But though. right now, well, barely used. Barely it's, used. Like, it's like yeah. brand new, Fred. Oh, okay. If you could get Paul McCartney's guitar, it would be used too, but you know. Yeah. Right. So uh, we just have to declare it surplus property, and our fire chief and town administrator will make sure we get a bargain. Right. Okay. For it. I'd make a motion to declare all these to be surplus property. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. And while we're discussing surplus property, <laughs> I uh, had well, correspondence with the chair of the housing committee and they're proposing putting the DeMayo lot out as surplus property for the town to sell. So. Why, yeah, why does the housing thing have the jurisdiction of it? They don't know it. They're not interested in it. They're not interested in it. No, no, we didn't. No, we got stalled for two months when we discussed it the last yeah. time because Fred thought there was some interest again by the housing community. I will, I'll remember what I said, Dan. I've assumed for like two years that they're not interested in it. Right, well, but we took it off the, the whole table. Right. It just got tabled, and so now I'm just. Yeah. Oh, okay. you know, no, I know we had and we did in the past have it on the uh, on the market to sell, mm -hmm. and then didn't get any bites. Right. I think so. it's got to go through an auction process, is my understanding. Right. Right. And then, yeah. So I I I'd, I'd want to know more about that before I before uh, do it. But yeah. thank you for bringing that up. Um, so the last item here before town administrator updates is to discuss the status of the manganese filtration property. I assume this is all hearts and roses and good news? It is good. Yeah. Um, after how many years of trying to oh, yeah. get this done. Um, so the filters are installed mm -hmm. um, and we received approval from uh, MassDEP October 3rd to turn them on and send out the filtered water. Um, the test results were really good. Um, there were you know, negligible amounts of, of manganese and negligible amounts of iron. Um, so that water has been, okay. uh, that water is going out now. Um, so that's that's good. Um, I know, and I know that they're, they're doing some hydrant flushing as well. Um, it doesn't mean that everything is out of the system yet, because um, uh -huh. we all know how, how <coughs> that yeah. works. But um, so that's that's really good news in terms of in terms of the project itself. There still needs to be a final meeting and punch list items. Um, that need to be done, but um, the good news is that yeah. they're operational and, and they uh, pass the test. Yep. Yep. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good job. Oh, excellent. And we also need to sign this before everybody leaves.
because okay. with um, the, the operational filters comes the signing of the bond. Actually, it's just totally coincidental, but um, this is, yeah. we need to sign for the bond of the $440,000 that paid for the filter. Um, and if you guys want to sign that, I could do town administrator updates concurrently if you'd like. Okay. Of which there are very few, I'm sure. Well, let me just say one comment on the, the water department. Uh, I've been hearing uh, comments from people that live on, I'd say, Egypt, in Egypt Road and the new Pine Plain subdivision about the quality of the water is really bad. It, uh, the, there's odor and discoloration. Yep. Uh, I guess I've been hearing that for two or three months, and it's probably been going on longer than that. Uh, I guess I'd like to know what what is the water department doing to address that? I mean, these filters, uh, if they're, I don't know if they're, they're correcting that problem or not, probably not. So, oh, yeah. I'm not a water by any means. Yeah. Uh, my understanding, and I'm going to get this wrong, um, my understanding is that that prior to the filtration system being installed, um, they needed to add um, certain chemicals to the water um, to um, essentially take out um, some parts of the, of the manganese. I know I'm getting it all right, but there were, there were certain chemicals that they were putting in. Um, I think it was phosphorus or something. Um, and what, I was, what they had told me was that the phosphorus is essentially food for certain types of bacteria. Um, so what they think was happening is that um, when the water would sit for long periods of time, they were essentially feeding this bacteria and it was creating this sulfur smell. Um, I can get a more technical answer if you want. I'm happy to do that, but um, with the water being filtered, they no longer need to add that phosphorus. Um, okay, so, so it should improve the situation. I'm told that it should improve it tremendously. Uh, there shouldn't be the need um, to add the additional chemicals. So. Manganese and intention manganese and iron are getting filtered out, and um, okay. it should help the water quality tremendously. Whether it does in practice, we'll we'll, we'll just have to see. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure Wayne can give you a better explanation yeah. of what the exact chemicals are. Oh. And if there's any like flushing that could help, right in that area, that so might be good. right. So they're doing the hydro flushing. Maybe they're doing it now. Are they still doing it? They're doing it now. Yeah. They're yep. doing it now. Um, so we, we hear those, we get those phone calls sometimes about okay. uh, brown water and sulfur and all. Uh, and I was told that that should be taken care of with the, with the filtration system. That's okay. Okay, well, we'll wait and see. Done, but we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on that. I hope you have it all fixed before the center of town puts up. Well, we'll need, we'll need to because we can't expand the system without. Yeah. Uh, addressing that. Okay. Um, last time I gave time minister updates, I scared everybody about the price of the Mill River wetland delineations. Uh -huh. um, so, in further conversations with Army Corps um, and our engineer, it's more like $1,100 for a wetland survey uh -huh. um, for the site visit. So, uh, it's not a full wetland delineation, which is going to take two days and $10,000. Um, that site visit's been scheduled for October 29th. Uh -huh. oh. oh, that's why it's that in my head. Yeah. yeah. The end of the month, they're busy. Um, I'll give some place to party. That's right. 29th at 1 p.m. Um, so <coughs> we'll have the wetland <coughs> before then. Um, and we'll see what where that goes. But okay. So that price has dropped substantially. Um, the ADA self evaluation transport, uh, transportation plan. Transition plan, um, we finalized that on October 7th. So that was good to wrap that process up. And we also submitted the ADA grant for the library on October 7th. That was a component of that grant. Do we have those steps 
electronic. Could you send us those? The what? The ADA steps for each facility. Oh, the transition plan? Yeah. Yep. You did? Yep, I have okay. those electronic. And, and I want to post those on the web as well. We should put, um, we should have that stuff online, I think. We, we talked about that for early yesterday or the other day, so I want to. Yep. Okay. Um, that was the biggest thing. Um, so, mass, um, mass DOT updated their capital improvement plan for 2020, uh, 2020 to 2024. Mm -hmm. And um, I was surprised to see that the Hayden Road project was not included in the plan. Huh. Um, so I emailed Fast uh, DOT as to why it wasn't in the plan. And what he told me was that because, because the project was removed from the, the Franklin County TIP, Transportation Improvement Plan, Remember, if you remember this last year, it got bumped for the Wisdom Way project in Greenfield because it's not on the Franklin, uh, the Franklin County tip that they don't that they won't list it on the CIP um, because it doesn't have a, a guarantee of funding. So Massey, which he doesn't want to invest the project in further design from 25 percent ahead if there's no guarantee of funding. So. Um, The project now is, we'll call it 24.5% designed um, because Mass DOT sent the engineer back to do some additional work in terms of having to do with the pavement width and things like that. Um, so I, I don't think it changes much in terms of uh, in terms of next steps. I mean, we need to get it back on the Franklin tip yeah. um, for 2024, 2025, whatever the next year is. Why was it removed as soon as possible? Because um, some of it's in the intricate. It was politics. Um, this this was on the this was programmed in the transportation improvement plan for 2024. Mass DOT really had it move the design up fast enough to get it to 25%, which is a requirement for putting it on the tip. And politics being what it was. Um, the bigger town got it. The bigger town got their project listed. In so rural project. Massachusetts, as gets usual, short sighted again. Takes so is, is this job. right? Is this the entire length, or is this just a portion in Whaley? This is a portion of Whaley, because the Williamsburg project will be listed in the, the the Williamsburg project has never been listed on on the on the CIP. So is it for Mass it, So it isn't yeah. now. It nope, isn't and it's not listed on the on the Piner Valley uh, tip Valley. either. And quite frankly, they have they have an even worse shot getting yeah, on the CIP when right. they have to go up against Springfield and West Springfield and right. Aguam and East Hampton and North Hampton and right. Westfield and I mean, yes, they get more money, but bigger projects too. Yeah. The bigger projects, yeah, yeah. and uh, it, it's something that's going. What's going to have? What's likely going to have to happen on that side of it is that they're going to have to. We're going to have to try to push Mass DOT to get the project designed, and something's going to have to fall off the Pine the the Pine Valley tip, right. and there's going to have to be money that's made available because a project doesn't make it, and this project's ready to go. Well, and as I recall, they are reticent to do just the Wheatley side of this without right. also doing the Williamsburg side. That's right. They want to do it all because then, because 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 Northampton's involvement is is contingent upon, or they're pushing for it is contingent upon both sides of the project being accomplished. Right. Yes. Yeah, that hurts us. There's some design and construction. There's some design and construction. Um, I don't want to call them constraints, but mm -hmm. considerations. Yeah. Because of the drainage there. I mean, it doesn't. The drainage doesn't just stop at the. At the way the Williamsburg uh, right. line, so part, it needs to be looked at in, in total. At so least a, a, a good portion of it around the reservoir needs to be looked at in total. Is so. Williamsburg pushing this or not really? Um, I don't know. My inclination would be to say not very hard, but I don't know. So you're saying our part won't, won't go unless theirs goes? Or that's, that's uh, theirs is I, I, I don't. 
I don't know that for a fact. Um, I think we need to push our part right. um, hard because I think we'll have a better chance of getting it on, on a tip. Yeah. And I think what will happen is once if we can get hours on, on the tip for that for the next fiscal year when it's supposed to be funded, we got to make sure it doesn't get knocked off by other projects. Yeah. But once ours is ready to go and has funding on our side, that's when it's likely that there might be funding that's made available on the Pioneer Valley side. Um, it's all fun. When, it's when all we started to talk about this, I don't know how many years ago now. Um, I think it was my first round on the select board we started talking about this. Right. Okay. So that would be like 2009. We all agreed that Northampton's involvement was the was the was the with the lever that was going to make this happen because they do have the clout to go up against other larger communities. For the um, Williamsburg side. <clears throat> What's that? For the Williamsburg side. Yeah. yeah. For the Williamsburg side, I would argue that they also have some sway over here too because it's Northampton and it's, and it's a drinking water supply. Right. Issue. right. Um, we need to get them engaged again. We absolutely need to get them engaged again, and that, and I would encourage. I don't care who it is, but to be, the, the 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 linkage there is Senator Comerford, yeah, because she represents all all or many of the communities. Okay. Good. Thinking about North, well, Northampton, well, they've got big projects with the interchange and, and well paving on, on Route 5 coming up. I don't know what else they have the big projects that would compete against this, but. Yeah, who knows? I mean, yeah. But it's their drinking water. Yeah. How about the Williamsburg Bridges? What is that project called? Williamsburg Road Bridge? Bridges, was it too? Uh, yeah, yeah uh, focused on the water Williamsburg bridge. Yeah. Road Bridge is project. Yeah, yeah, you're correct. No, where did it, what happened to it? Status is what he's asking. Status. Do we have oh, a status on it? Oh. It's two bridges, but it's supposed. You know what I mean. But what's the status? Um, so it's it just got through um, Chapter Seventy Five review. Um, Seventy Five. Eighty Five. 75, doesn't really matter. It's Mass DOT's review of bridge projects that happens in Boston. Um, and it's gone through that. So the hope is, is that it will go out, um, that time bond will put it out for, um, for bid this fall. And then hopefully we'll have construction um, happening in the spring sometime. Everything is happening in the spring next year, so. So for that to happen, I mean, you've got to go up. This, this fall, is, there's a month and a half left of this fall. And I'm assuming I mean, if it's not by Thanksgiving, it's not happening. Oh, I think it'll happen. Okay. I feel like that's another thing that came up in like my first year or two as a oh, slug like, yeah. And I remember Mr. Saban coming in and talking about it. We talked about it in the old, yep. the old Alice, Virginia Alice room. Yep. Talk about Anything it? else? Uh, our best chance is to, to get that on the tip, maybe if there's in four years, whatever, new administration, the state or federal program. I don't know what the federal transportation program yeah. funding is. And when the new program starts, you know, that makes more money available, so usually for states. So, yeah. Yeah. That, and then whatever the administration decides to fund from the local level, too. So. Yeah. Right. Well, I would encourage you to reach out to Senator Comerford. Okay. I mean, at the end of the day, we need to convince Mass DOT to. Further the design. I mean, they need to they need to further the design from 25 percent, and we need to convince um, the Franklin uh, <coughs> Transportation Committee, MP TPO, yeah, yeah, Transportation Planning Organization, that they need to list the project. The representative there it, it will probably be a guy from Montague that we can work with. Who's it going to be? Is it Steve? Yeah. Steve Ellis. Yeah. Southern. Southern Franklin County. Or is it central? Anyway, it's 
yeah. seven minutes past the time we said we would finish our meeting. Do you have any more? So are there any more town administrator <laughs> updates? No. Okay. Okay. See, I let you guys go seven minutes late. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Uh, I would entertain a motion. Motion. To adjourn. A second. All in favor? Aye. It's aye. It's game five, yeah. Johnson's got to go.